Hello and welcome to the first episode of the City of Heroes tutorial and Let's Play series here at the PC Gaming Vortex. My name is Sicaro, and this series will take you from character creation all the way through the content of the game. Uh, we are going to start today with character creation process for my character. And a little later on in the next video, I'll be joined with two of my friends, and we will start leveling as a group going through the game content. This game just recently went free-to-play, and there are multiple options associated with the free-to-play content. Um, if you are a free-to-play player, you, are, you have access to the entire leveling curve of the game. Um, there are specific quests and things you cannot do, but for the main... For the mainstay, you can do a majority of the content. Um, the other good thing about it is VIP players unlocks everything, including certain cash shop items, all the costume upgrades, uh, unique um, quests you can go on, and unique content you can go on. So whichever way you're playing, you're definitely getting either a good solid free-to-play game or a good solid um, value for your money with being a VIP member. I am currently not a VIP member. It's very possible I will become one in the future. Um, the character you're seeing on screen right now was my main character um, from back in the day before it went free to play. Um, his options are not available um, within the character creation process, so on my new character, he's going to look a little bit different. So on the first screen you'll see here, oh, I should go back. On the first screen here, you'll see a couple different options. The City of Heroes Freedom option at the top is just basic. You choose either a hero or a villain. You choose one of the ten basic archetypes, and then the heroes will go to Paragon City as a starting area, or the villains will go to Rogue Isles. Um, the good thing about uh, a VIP member is you get the option of going rogue. What going rogue is, is it gives you access to the ten basic archetypes, but you can also choose to be a resistance or a loyalist, which is basically a neutral character for the tutorial. All characters will start in the Pretoria area, which is an alternate dimension you can only get to by being a VIP, and those characters will be a Praetorian. What that means is you are neither a hero or a villain. Um, at level 20, you actually choose which way you go. It's kind of a storyline progression that takes you through choosing whether you want to be a good guy or you want to fall into evil and become a villain. At that point, you will go to Paragon City or you will go to the Rogue Isles. So VIPs have a different option for starting. At the bottom, there are choices for your origin. Uh, the origin, it, it actually does a couple things. It makes it so there are certain items in the game you can only use if you have a specific origin. Other than that, it's, it's really just backstory, how you want to create your persona. Um, I'm going to go with technology. I like the idea of technology, kind of a Batman background. Okay, it splits it up into archetypes. You have the tank, obviously the person that's supposed to have the good mitigation, that's supposed to be able to take damage, stand in the front, and make sure that enemy doesn't attack his friends, his or her friends. There's melee damage up front, just knocking out the DPS, doing as much damage as humanly possible. And then there's range damage, which is what I'm going to be choosing, which is my personal favorite. You stand in the background with some type of a ranged weapon, a gun, or a blaster of some sort, and you just lay down damage on the enemies. There's crowd control. Crowd control is very important, as you can see Ghost Widow on the screen here as a, as a demonstration of crowd control. This is someone that locks down the enemies, making it to where if you've pulled off more than you can chew, you can take them one at a time and make a large group more manageable to beat instead of being overwhelmed. Um, a lot of crowd control also get buffs and debuffs, which is uh, very useful. There are also support options. These are your healers. The healers also have good buffing and debuffing. Support and crowd control tend to be hard to be uh, played solo, but definitely not impossible to do so. And then there's pets. Uh, that's when you do most of your damage with minions that you control, whether it's one or many, depending on the type you choose. Um, this allows you to kind of be your own army. It's a very popular, I believe, one of the people that will be joining us later in the series will be playing a pet class, if I recall. So I'm going to go ahead and choose ranged damage. Here you'll see the archetypes that you can choose from. As you'll see, there are four at the bottom there. Uh, those four are purchase only. I believe they unlock if you're a VIP member, but uh, since I am not a VIP member, they are there. You also have the option to just purchase one individually without having to pay monthly for it. Um, once you purchase it, it is unlocked all the way across your account. So the three options, I have Blaster. This is an extremely high DPS. Defender is a little more defense capable. And then the Corruptor I've actually never played, but looking at the stats at the bottom, it looks like it's more balanced between the two. So I'm going to be a Blaster, which is what my original character was. I'm a familiar, and I, I like it quite a bit. 
So here's the different options you can choose. These are your primary powers. So what you can do is you click on the power, look on the right, and it'll list all the different powers you're going to have options for as you level up your character. There are quite a few options. And as you can see, this is obviously going to change the aesthetic of your character, whether you're shooting a bow, whether you're holding a gun, whether you're shooting energy out of your hands. It really does change the feel of your character, and that's one of the great things about City of Heroes and City of Villains is you can really customize your character to be exactly what you're hoping to be. Uh, make your own hero hero in all essence of the word, it, or make your own villain in that case. Um, I'm going to be choosing archery. My last character was actually an energy blast character. When you choose the option, you get to choose one or two starting powers. You do not lose the ability to have the other one. You can choose that as you level up. Uh, you will have access to all of these eventually. So I'm going to choose snapshot, which is just a really quick direct damage slot. Okay, then it asks you for secondary powers. Your primary powers is really the base of your abilities, but you have a secondary power to make you more unique. In this case, it's all kinds of crowd control type of stuff. So darkness, I can lock people down, I can uh, damage over time, whereas my primary powers are very direct and very explosive. These are going to be more of secondary powers to help with the, the parts that I'm not very good at. Um, fire manipulation is one I've played with in the past. It's very cool. You can literally light a person on fire. You can summon a fire sword. All kinds of neat options. I'm going to go with Dark Manipulation on this character. I like the idea of being able to lock someone in place as a ranged character. And I also like the idea of having a bow and arrow and darkness powers. It sounds like a neat concept. Okay, so here's where you choose the body type and the size of your character. So you actually have quite a few options here. You can go all the way up to 8 feet tall, all the way down to 4 feet tall, depending on how you want. I'm going to go about 6'8 there. Uh, the physique, as you can tell, very large changes. You can be very skinny, you can be very large and muscular. I'm going to go kind of almost a medium part, bring my shoulders up a little bit, chest up a little bit. When you see my costume, you'll understand why I'm going this way. Not too much waist, not too much hips, and my legs are just okay. The beauty of this is it gives you so many options. You can be female, you can be enormous, like a bruiser type, um, really opening it up for the custom ability of this game. So you can really make anything you'd like to be. If you have a character in your head you're thinking is a superhero you've always wanted to make or something you've known since childhood, this is the place to flesh it out. Because between all the costume choices and the modification of the body types, you really can make anything. The sky is definitely the limit. Let me really quickly go back to where I was on these. Okie doke. Okay, so this is the costume choices. I already have a preset template that I'll load in just a minute, so you don't have to see me doing all the different changes, but I do want to show, show you around a little bit. Uh, you have choices where you can start with uh, different uh, costume sets. So basically it changes all aspects of your character as a beginning point, or of course you could just leave it like that for the whole time. Um, and you can change the colors that are linked in your costume too, so you can be anything you'd like to be. Um, the head, there's so many details. You can go into the little details, the different parts of the mask, top half of the face, bottom half of the face, uh, painting on the face, logos, upper body is the same thing. Um, so many different choices, it's, it's endless. I could, I could be here forever showing you. This is definitely something this game has that I have yet to see in another game. Even the other superhero games weren't able to pull off the amount of customization you can do in this game. It is quite amazing. Um, weapons is also another cool concept. You can actually change your bows so you have a different looking bow. Um, one of the other great things about this game is you actually have a tailor in the game that allows you to go in and change your costume after you started. So if you want to go in and you have this neat idea after you started, you want to change your bow type, they release something new, you can do that. You have the ability to go in and change what you what you look like at a later time. And as you progress in the game, you actually unlock costume slots so you can have more than one costume. Say you want to have one for cold and one for fire or however you want to design it, you can do that. One with a mask, one with Without a mask, say you just learn not to like the costume choices, you want to start from scratch, you can do that, make a completely different costume choice. Um, the back and the auras, those are items that you have to be a VIP or purchase them in the shop to use. Um, I usually have those on my character, but because I'm not a VIP on this account, I'm not going to be able to use them this time. They might appear later in the series though. So let's load it up. See, this is what my character would have normally looked like with the back item and all the glowy items with the auras. But we have taken those off. There we go. Let's take a look at the different bows and see if we can pick a cool looking bow since my original character wasn't a bow character. I like the compound bow. I'll go with the compound bow. Okay, so here we go. 
So this is where you can customize the appearance of your powers. This is a really neat aspect, and this wasn't available the first time I had played this game. What this does is this actually makes it to where I can manipulate what the power looks like. Um, it doesn't appear like I have any options. It's very possible this might be a um, optional thing, or it might be something I have to unlock. I'll have to look into this a little further, but that's okay. I like the original look of the powers, and I like the uh, the graphics of the powers and the colors of the powers. It did a very good job of making you feel heroic or villainous in the case of villains. You definitely have a a large, over-the-top way of your powers. It's It's not you pull out something and throw it. It's gigantic arrows and explosions and all kinds of cool stuff like that, so... Okay, so we're going to go ahead and register the character here. I do need to add a name. So I'm going to call this character Unbridled Fury. That goes along with my Manic Tendencies, which is the name of my main character. And we're going to go ahead and start up. Do you wish to play the tutorial? I am not going to go through the tutorial. I might go through the tutorial on a character as a separate video if people ask for that. But I do have people waiting to play, so as we go through the game, I will make sure I teach the basic concepts of the tutorial um, so that you have a basic idea of how to play the game. I am choosing Hero. Um, one of the other changes they made in the game recently is it allows you to take any class you'd like, any choices you'd like, and choose a side. As there were before, the ones that were designed for villains were designed for villains, and the ones that were for heroes were for heroes. Now, you can go either side you want. So now we're loading into the game. I'll probably have to do some UI tweaks, as is typical when you first start a game. I'm very impressed with the, the free-to-play implementation they've done. They've definitely learned from other games and done a very good job of uh, getting it nice and solid. Apparently I'm already unlocking stuff. Okay, earned badges already. Paragon Rewards. Those are Veteran Rewards. The Paragon Reward system is very awesome. Uh, the way it works is the longer you've played and the longer your character is active, the longer you will have uh, things unlocking on your account. As you can see, my account has, is quite old, so a lot of things are unlocking. But the way it works now is every month that you're a VIP member, it gives you one point to spend in the Paragon Tree. The Paragon Tree is right here. Um, done. Okay. And close that out. There we go. And as you can see, I have points spent at the bottom, but it actually allows you to choose where you put your points as you earn them and gives you different benefits for different levels of it. For example, the first level, um, once you spend one, one token, it gives you the unlock of the, uh, the badge for Rookie. Um, as you go up, you get things like extra spots in your inventory and extra spots in your bank. It's very good about really paying you back. Um, like, for example, once you reach level 4, which is a total of 6 months paid, you get a lifetime auction house license, allowing you to just do whatever you like on the auction house. Whether you are a free-to-play player or a VIP player, you're allowed to use the auction house at will. Very neat options. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out now. Uh, next episode, I'll be joined uh, with two characters, uh, the friends of mine. Uh, we'll all be starting from level 1, taking you through, showing you the ropes, and showing you how fun City of Heroes can truly be. I'll see you next time.